John 8, 31 through 41. The heading in my Bible says, The Children of Abraham. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave is no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are trying to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do not, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. We'll stop there. This is a big, long discourse, but this is the... This is the part for our purposes today. If you have your Bibles open still, look at verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, verse 31 and 32. The truth isn't static. It's not arbitrary. It's not like algebra. It's not theoretical. It does something. It works. The truth is powerful. It makes things happen. So, the truth is that there's electric currents running through wires around here. And it makes these lights work. If I turn these switches off, they go out. I flip them back on, they go back on. If this, were, if this were not true, then I could flip these switches all day long and it would either stay off or stay on. But the truth is, is that all of these electric currents are controlled by these switches. In the same way, there's some truth that the Bible has told us about. Some truth that's much bigger than is there electric currents controlled by these switches. If this is the truth, then there are, there are powerful things that can happen. So the truth isn't static. It, it does something. Now some people would like to read the Bible as if it were just some uplifting literature. Are we having screen problems right now? It wasn't loaded. Well then. I'm going to fix that right now. Or Bob's already working on it. You, uh, you want the uh, thumb drive? Okay, they've got it. They know what they're doing. Apologize for that. Okay. The truth isn't static. It does something. That's your first part on your outline. And the next part is, some people would like to read the Bible as if it were uplifting literature. Just something to make us feel good. You know how you were in your kid and you parents read you a bedtime story or something like that, and it was just something nice and uplifting. Some people would like to read, this, read the Bible like it was just something nice and uplifting, like a nice bedtime story, but for adults, right? As if we 
just read the Bible just to be encouraged. Well, and when we're kids, you know, we, we have like tooth fairies and Easter bunnies and stuff like that. And they're just nice little things for us to, to make us happy and everything. Well, the Bible is not the tooth fairy or Easter bunnies for adults. The Bible is not fantasy, it's reality. For some people who want to read the Bible like it's just fantasy, it's not. This is reality. The things that the Bible says happen, those things really happened. There wasn't just a fictional Jesus who died and rose again. There was an actual Jesus who walked this earth. He actually died. He actually rose again. He was a real person. And what he said, he really said. So we can't say, read the Bible with some sort of preface, wouldn't it be nice if Jesus rose from the dead? No, that doesn't work. The Bible is not inspiring literature, it's the plain and simple truth. This is the truth, just straightforward. We read inspiring literature to feel good. We read the Bible so that we would know it's true. Sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes it doesn't make us feel good. But it's real all the same. Look at the screen here with me. How does the knowledge of God's creation and providence help us? We can be patient when things go against us. Thankful when things go well. And for the future, we can have good confidence in our faithful God and Father that nothing will separate us from His love. All creatures are so completely in His hand that without His will, they can neither move nor be moved. Our God is all-powerful and He holds all things in His hand. And so, because God is all-powerful, and He lets us make some choices and stuff, of course, but nothing ever happens in this world without His say-so. And so, because of that truth, we can be patient when things go against us. We can be thankful when things go well, and for the future, when we look ahead, we can have good confidence and our God and Father, that there's nothing that's going to separate us from His love. No matter what happens in this world, no matter what mistakes we might make, no matter what bad things might happen to us, or good things, God's love is still going to be there. You can tell what's true from what's pretend by whether or not it works. Those light switches there were just pretend, they wouldn't work. If they're real, they work. Myths and fantasies, they just bring happy thoughts. But truth changes our lives. If you want to read a nice story, there's lots of nice stories out there. If you want the truth, this is what you need to look at. And you don't need to go any farther than that. So if the Bible is true, then Jesus Christ is everything to us and we can see Him changing our lives. Okay? If you want to say that this isn't true, that's one thing. But I think most of us here would say that the Bible is true. Okay, well, if it is true, if that's real, then we should be able to see that Jesus Christ is changing our lives. If the Bible is true, then Jesus Christ should be changing our lives. And when we don't believe what the Bible says, then our lives will be full of just chasing one fantasy after another. We'll just be wandering around and going after this or that or the other thing. 
I have one person, a historical person for you. His name is James Pike. How many of you know that name or have heard that name before? A few people have. Okay. Well, James Pike was an Episcopal priest and a bishop. And in 1955, he was quoted publicly as rejecting the virgin birth of Jesus. He said, no, Jesus wasn't born of a virgin. And the Trinity, no, that, that's not real. So he started to say these things aren't, aren't real. He called the virgin birth a primitive myth. In 1966, he resigned from the church. And on September 9, 1969, he, he actually died. He was a known avid liberal. He was a serial adulterer. He was divorced and remarried three times. He was an, one of the earliest proponents of uh, the acceptance or affirmation of gay and lesbian relationships. He rejected the doctrines of hell as well as the virgin birth and the Trinity. He was a bishop of California, the entire state of California, in 1958 until his resignation. And he resigned saying the church is a sick and dying institution. In 1967, he had a mistress who committed suicide, and he did everything that he could to erase any connection that he had with her. He was not successful. The year before that, his son committed suicide, and in the next year, he participated in a live televised seance to talk with his dead son, obviously because he had some unresolved issues with his son through a medium who was actually another minister. And he detailed all of those experiences in his book called The Other Side. And in 1969, he died. He was actually in the Holy Land at the time. He was in the Judean desert. And he made a couple wrong turns in his driving. And he ended up somewhere lost. And his car stalled. And he was looking for help. And he died of exposure in the desert. He died as he lived in a desert looking for something that he couldn't find on his own. When we reject the truth of Scripture, we'll wander and not find what we're looking for. The Bible clearly says Jesus Christ is the truth. He is himself the truth. The truth is a person. we we'll put it that way. The truth is not a list of statements. It's a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Everything that's true is through him. He made everything. And so that everything that you are ever taught that's actually true, it's true because he made it so. If you have your Bibles open, verse 34, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. When we sin, we're slaves. Sin bullies and enslaves us. Sin is a bully. It controls. It dominates. It manipulates. And, maybe worst of all, it confuses us into thinking that there's nothing wrong with it at all. Verse 33, look at this. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. Never have been slaves of anyone. 
they forgot a huge chunk of their history. They were slaves in Egypt for 400 some years. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. 400 years of slavery in Egypt? Oh, never mind that. They forgot about the slavery in Egypt. Sin makes us delusional. We conveniently forget certain parts of ourselves or our lives, certain decisions that we make, and we can just say, oh, I'm okay. I've never been a slave of anyone. The truth is, is that, no. If we are participating in sin, we are a slave to it. Even if we don't realize it or recognize it. Or maybe we don't even want to acknowledge it because we can't handle it. Verses 35 and 36. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The truth of Jesus Christ sets us free from sin. He is our freedom. We can go in our delusions and walk around and try to figure out things ourselves, or we can turn to Jesus and actually be set free from our delusions and our sins and our problems. Jesus Christ is the truth and the truth that we need. And the problem is, is that we don't think we need him. Verse 41, you are doing your things your own father does, Jesus said to them. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Well, plenty of people can claim to be Christians. The only father we have is God himself, but resist the truth of Jesus Christ, where he says, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things Abraham did. But as it is, you're trying to kill me, a man who's told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham didn't do such things. So you can say that, oh, the only father we have is God himself. You can say that. You can say, oh, I'm a Christian. Lots of people say that. But do you accept the truth that Jesus Christ is? That's a whole different thing. And these people here are demonstrating that. They claim to be believers, but they didn't really accept the truth. The Bible says Jesus sets us free. It says it in the passage that we just read today. Now some Christians would say or think that they're defined by their parents, or their genetics, or their environment. There are some people who might say that they're Christians, but, but uh, my parents made me this way, or my genes make me this way, or I was raised in a bad situation, and so I just can't help what I do. Some people will say that they are born losers. Some people believe that they're born gay and lesbian, and there's just no getting around that. Or some people, and I've had people actually say this to me, I was born a mistake. The truth is that Jesus sets us free by giving us a new identity. As it says in the Bible, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. If Jesus is the truth, if he's really the truth, then we will increasingly be defined by him instead of any other things, any other excuses that we would have to do our own thing. Are we defined by him? Or are we defined by our genetics, our parents, our environment, and do we blame our problems on those things? Or do we accept the truth of Christ and follow Him in it?
Jesus sets us free by giving us a new life with new delights, priorities, and so forth. There's a lot of people out there who are trying to get the most toys before they die. That's the, the game that they're playing. Or finish at the top of a totem pole of some kind, being most popular, most successful, best looking, being on the cover of a magazine. Have as much fun and pleasure because you only live once. There's a lot of people who live by those truths. But Jesus sets us free by giving us a whole different life than that. If Jesus is the truth, if we're going to say that, then we will get bored with those rat races. We will be increasingly bored with those and we will start pursuing God's promises and blessings. All of these things that most people chase after, we're going to get bored with that stuff. We're going to realize, boy, this is, this is just a wild goose chase. Jesus and his promises and his truth, that's, that's the real thing. And I'm going to learn more about that and I'm going to pursue those things. I'm going to pursue what it means to be saved by his grace, to show his love, and to share that grace with other people. Those who are set free by Jesus will be known for not being slaves to things like fear or guilt or anger or their desires. Not that they'll never make mistakes, but they won't be known for their mistakes. They won't be defined by them. Real Christians can tell stories that the truth of Jesus works. It works. This is not fantasy. This is reality. Real Christians aren't afraid of suffering, dying, or even losing other people's approval. Real Christians aren't afraid or plagued by guilt of their past sins or shame of what others have done. Real Christians aren't holding on to offenses that they would lose their temper or make threats or just be negative people and bitter. And real Christians aren't doing whatever they desire. They're not being controlled by their cravings and lusts and appetites. And real Christians can talk about how they used to be those things, but Christ has changed them. Because fantasy just makes you feel good. The truth changes you. So your last thing to be left with today. Real Christians know they have long ways to go, but can testify about how far they've come. They can say that Jesus works. He's real. He changed me. He's still changing me. And you can bet your life on him. The Bible is true. It works. It's not nice stories. It's the real thing. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we pray that we would not be just caught up in, in the things of this world, that we would not look at your word as a bunch of stories or fantasies, but Lord, that we would see it for what it really is, the truth of Jesus Christ. We pray that we would pursue that truth and that, Lord, we would believe it and that we would see it working itself out in our lives. Please work in us by that truth, Lord Jesus, and make us more like you. Make us true, authentic, real believers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.